Hi everyone, good afternoon from Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. I'm your host, Adela Mehic-Janic, and today I have a very special guest, Tarik from Salzburg, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome, Tarik. Yeah. Hello, Adela. <laughs> Hi, Tarik. Thank you so much for finding the time. I know we had a little bit of, um, you know, you have a busy schedule. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So let's kick off with what's happening in Salzburg. So, so how is your day? So who's Tarik? Let's kick it off. Oh, Salzburg. Salzburg is my hometown. So I was born here next uh, to Salzburg in a little village called Hallein. And um, I, I love to be here and I love to live here. Um, it's a very, very nice place. And if you have ever the pleasure to visit Salzburg, just let me know. Then there's always a coffee for you <laughs> here in our <laughs> education center. Um, my, my days are uh, uh, filled with a lot of uh, things to do. Um, my main profession, I'm um, deputy head of department um, in the Austrian social insurance company. Okay. And... Um, uh, we are responsible for the contracts between our health suppliers and uh, us. And we are also uh, responsible for the accounting there. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that's a, we, uh, we are responsible for all of Austria. So that's a very big project. We have 13,000 uh, employees at the OGK. Uh, and um, uh, my work is to... Uh, organize the health supply, the health services, primary health care centers, mm -hmm. uh, dentists, um, general practitioners, and other doctors. So we have contracts that um, every employee can go to the doctor and get a mm -hmm. health supply. Um, that's my all-day work. That's my main profession. Um, I'm an educated uh, law lawyer, maybe we can say. I studied law in mm -hmm. uh, Salzburg, and I also did my doctor's degree there. But I never wanted to be a, a solicitor uh, at court uh, or a judge. Um, and so I decided to study more. Uh, and I studied also political science, European Union studies. And um, because of my work in the health sector, I also decided to make a, a healthcare management master and also a master in management at the uh, Salzburg Management and Business School here. Um, that's my uh, education uh, side mm -hmm. and um, when I'm not in the uh, ÖGK in my work, I'm a member of the city council of the municipality of Salzburg and I'm responsible for the traffic here uh, in my fraction. Um, and uh, if my time lets me uh, do more, I'm uh, investing it in our social project that's Lärm Um We are doing that together with a lot of cool people. That's a social business concept where we help children in uh, difficult situations in school, in life, and we help them uh, to be better in school. And mm -hmm. we also try to improve them uh, uh, outside the school. Um, that's a project which exists since uh, two years. Um, we um, have uh, about uh, 150 uh, students here per year. Um, and uh, we are very happy to, uh, that we can help almost every one of them. And uh, our project uh, was also uh, nominated for an education award and uh, there was a big TV show and uh, we managed it to, uh, to get into the top three uh, of this uh, challenge. Uh, we, we are very happy about that because the other projects were also very, very cool. So um, it was a great honor for us that uh, a young social business like Lärm Profi, that's the name, mm -hmm. uh, have managed to get uh, this, this, um, this prize. And this all, it was also connected with a funding about 200,000 uh, 200, uh, euros. Wow, that's great, Eric. I will definitely link the Learn Profi uh, to this video also in the comment section so that people can have a look Thank at you, it. Thank you, Of course. Tell me about this. So what drives you, Tarek? So you have many, many, many responsibilities during the day. So how does this come together? And I am sure like many other people, there is some motivation behind. So it's not just about the titles. It, there is something 
probably in your story that you are so motivated to continue doing that and help those, uh, for instance, those students. So what was your story? Um, it's not about the story, but I think everyone who is not uh, looking like everyone else and whose name is a little bit different and uh, his accent is a little bit different. Everyone of us have the, his uh, stories about how they didn't felt well in a situation, how they maybe get discriminated in a situation in school, in work, in politics, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, I was all, always uh, a person who, um, who, who had a principle about justice and uh, about equality of chances. So um, I, I couldn't accept that someone is getting uh, less chances than another person. So mm -hmm. we have the situation in life that everyone has other circumstances, uh, other, uh, and another situation, they are different, but I think a system, uh, school, politics, uh, society have to provide circumstances that every child has the chance, the chance mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to have a good future, to have a perspective. So that was uh, that drives me that I said, okay, our school system have had uh, has a lot of uh, problems, and we need uh, maybe they need a support that we can help the children they couldn't help. That was the reason, and um, I'm. Uh, what really drives me is that when we see that we that our help. Uh, uh, works you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, yeah. that we can help these kids is the best uh, thing uh, uh, your best motivation to continue your work because you're you're right it's really hard because mm -hmm. i have an, a job with i think uh, 50 hours week i also have this political uh, side and um to to get on the weekends there and to, to to organize all these things which have you have to organize and at the end you are the, the lot we had a lot of people which are working here and we, which are supporting us but at the end uh, you are responsible for the uh, you are responsible for this project and you have to yeah. um, uh, you have to manage that the work yeah and i think this uh, price is a uh, is an honor, but it's also a, a, a kind of a responsibility to do the best with this money to provide more chances for these yeah. kids which needs these chances. Absolutely. Um, this got me thinking now that we are parents. So it, uh, my husband and I, we came from Bosnia here. And of course, we, you see my last name. So I have two names. So the first one is from my father. So my family name, the second one is from my husband. And with we just with my name right you just you know where i'm coming from and then some people may just make um assumptions about certain things without even having me to say a word right so this is the yes. world that we live in so they can assume and the story is completely different so when i i work in the it so in the tech industry so you wouldn't assume that and that was like a big shock when we came to austria so i didn't know that there are so many so um yeah not that many women in it and in tech so in bosnia is a completely different story and and it has of course to do with the economical and the financial stability that that these uh, jobs offer right so when I decided to study, it was like, I, I don't have second chance. So if I, I'm, and, and as, a, as a woman, so the, the first one from the family that goes to study, you don't have a second chance. You, you cannot blow this off. You, you have, you know, a lot of, you know, the whole the village is looking at you. You know, if you, if you blow this off, it's like no other woman is going to go to the university because they will say, oh, okay, she was a great student and she didn't succeed. So, you know, why should I send my girl, you know, my daughter to somewhere else, you know? Uh, so that's, um, that got me thinking now, for me, for us, it's a different story. For my daughter, it's, a, it's something that I'm always thinking about, you know, how is it going to be for her, even though she's born here and she will pro speak probably at least three or four languages, but I still have this, okay, her last name will, for some people, mean something else. You know, they will, you know, don't open her 
doors that should be open based on her you know abilities this you know makes me worry a little bit about the society where right now yeah i i understand that um and that's also one thing which drives me because um I'm doing this politic, political thing um, because I want better circumstances for my kids. So uh, they shouldn't be discriminated because of their name, because of their hair color, because of their, I don't know, origins, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I, I think you and I are a little bit some kind of pioneers, you know? We have to do that because um, I was the first uh, person from this working migrant generation from Turkish migrants and also from the Balkans, uh, which was a member of the parliament here in Salzburg. So that was the first thing and you, you <laughs> they were so, uh, they all, all looked a little bit stressed when I came into the parliament, you know, that was a kind of, you know, um, uh, an inauguration is a party. It's a positive thing. But when I was there, it wasn't positive. You know, it was the first, oh, what is he doing here? It, she, she, you know what I mean? If When I looked in their uh, their faces, it, uh, it, it was lost somehow. What is he doing here? But um, that was a moment where I realized that it's really necessary to do that. It's hard to do these first steps, but I think the second person, the third person, which will be or is now, a member of this parliament is had it, had it easier than me. So after dozens of people, it will be normal to be there, to be in the as a woman in the tech uh, business, to be in the social insurance company in a public institution as a migrant person um, with a non-classical Austrian name. We are pioneers, and that's a I think a very important thing. Um, and I, 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 I really believe that uh, one person could do a lot for a lot of people which are following this, his, this person, you know, mm -hmm. um, th that's uh, not easy for the pioneer, but I think it's a, it's a big challenge and a big responsibility. True. Um, so you're my 61st guest. So I had over 60 people from wow. 25 countries uh, that Ooh. live mostly in Vienna, some of them in, in Salzburg, like Nina Dedic, who uh, recommended you, Nina Tao. <laughs> uh, and all of them, you know, it's quite interesting. All of them, they are working full time. So they have, most of them, they are parents. And most of them, they have one or the other organization that are, they're supporting. So they're mentors or they you know, they're mentors here in Austria, they're mentors in their home country. So, so far, I didn't meet people like, you know, foreigners, expats or internationals called them migrants who don't have like three jobs or four jobs. Or f I don't know. It's, it feels like, you know, they're all doing something, which is amazing, you know, right? Because that's the steps to go for. But on the other hand, you know, when do we get break, Darik? Are we going to always have to do like do extra and extra and extra in order to get that seat at the table? Yeah, that's a good question um, because I think people like us have to overperform all the time because uh, in all situations in school, in work, you have to be better than others that you can uh, skip this um, uh, difference in the level because of your background, you know, yeah. uh, maybe it's there, maybe it's not there, but you're feeling like it's yeah. there. So uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, kind of complex, you know, yeah. that's the reason why we want, uh, we want to overperform to be good in all the things we do. And the second point is why we are doing these social things to being mentors to connect people do networking uh, is we can identify with these people you know we were in the same situation we felt a little bit lost uh, between two worlds uh, being in a new uh, situation uh, and uh, that's that's uh, creating uh, some kind of empathy yeah. and um, that's I think also one reason why we uh, are at the one side overperforming and at the other side why we are supporting organizations social uh, businesses, social uh, organizations, and other NGOs. 
through. Uh, on the other hand, as well, I meet many, especially women, so many women uh, from across the world that have started their own companies here. Imagine that, you know, you're from abroad, you're here, you, and they, most of them, they have kids, you know, once after the second child, they said like, this is too much, you know, I'm on all sides, so I'm, I'm going to work, like I'm not fully there, I'm at home, not fully there, I'm with kids, not fully there, not time for me, and so on, they start their own companies, and they are successful. But I also see like major corporation organizing events, but I don't see these women there. I see usual faces, and this is starting to, you know, I'm now on a maternity leave, and this starts to bug me a, bit, a little bit, right? Why do we see you know, with all due respect, all the same, old, same, same people. And on the other hand, I meet every week a new woman that against, you know, that doesn't have any qualification that been just started and made success, you know, just the other day I met one. So where are they? So on one hand, there's so much things, you know, that are happening, but they don't seem. Yeah, you're completely right. There are so many successful women and we need them as role models for others, you know. Um, we have in our education center also workshops about girls empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, we try to give the kids, the little kids, um, the message that you as a girl, as a woman can achieve a lot. And you have, uh, uh, if we can support you, if we can help you, just let us know. So mm -hmm. that's the first point. The second point is we are also organizing some kind of leadership programs here in Austria. Uh, and we always try to get uh, at least the half of the people, participants, women's, women, because uh, um, I really do believe that uh, we need role models. We need platforms where we can present these women mm -hmm. um, and where we can give them the possibility to present their work, to present their companies, to present their um, themselves, you know? because they achieve a lot. And as a woman, which uh, are also have duties in the in family and have duties around, uh, it's not easy. And also to get again in the job after pregnancy and so on, that's not easy. And we need systems how to provide that they can uh, get back into the business, get back on the scene and the chance to present their work. True. True, I, I fully agree with that. And one of the points that I took actions in, in my person is that I don't go to the events where there is no diversity, right? I don't, I don't go there because, you know, nowadays you have millions of events if you want to visit. Everybody went hybrid so I can join to in the US, I can join in China, whatever I want, you know, and time is valuable. So one of the things that I said to myself, look, I'm not going to go there and, and listen to five men, five white men who is going to tell us a story or go to the events where I've heard those speakers over and over again, year after year after year. So where's that diversity, right? Because everybody's like, yeah, diversity, inclusion, we, we stand by. And then you see their event and there's like one foreigner speaker. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. That's the reason why I always connect with organizations which are really diverse. So one example, I'm also... Um, participating in programs by the German Marshall Fund of the United States, mm -hmm. organizing different leadership programs, fellowships. And they, um, I joined a program in Brussels, uh, which is called TILM, Transatlantic uh, Inclusive Leadership Network. And um, that's, I think, three years ago. And we are still connected with the people from there and all over the world. And it's great to see that in other countries there are diverse people which are successful, which are um, having this social impact in the whole society. And it's really, really um, gorgeous to see how they are doing their work, how they are uh, facilitating their projects. And, um, and you can learn a lot and the network brings a lot of possibilities. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I, I want to take part uh, at the uh, Marshall Memorial Fellowship. That's a fellowship between Americans and Europeans um, for four weeks. I hope to do that uh, next year. Mm. But you know, Corona, pandemic, and a lot of work. <laughs> we will see uh, if that works. But 
Um, I'm also investing a lot of time in this because I really believe that they can uh, provide really, really cool projects, organizations, movements, and so on. True, true. And, and we need that. I hope it works out for you, Tarek. To finish up on a, on a very on a positive note, so we look in, right into the future, right? Because that's that's what we do. We stand up every morning and fresh up and do the work what needs to be done. So, for people who are watching this and for people who are considering moving to Austria from across the world, so what would you say? So what's how they can prepare? What they can do? You know, I think. Um, a very important thing is that the point uh, we discussed last, uh, networking, connect with people which are living there. Uh, as you mentioned, um, now with uh, uh, virtual conferences, you can connect with people from all over the world. So get in touch with companies, get in touch with organizations, get in touch with individuals which are working maybe in the same sector you want to work, or um, which are involved in projects you are interested in. So that's a very, very important think I think um, and also uh, work with if it's possible work with professional people so uh, try to connect with people which are having a professional approach in projects uh, that makes uh, things easier you know <laughs> and uh, um, uh, but um, I think these two points could be a good advice for people which want to um, yeah, which want to do good things here in Austria. Sure. Austria is a beautiful country, as you said yourself. It's, it has lots of potential and all of my guests, they call it home. You know, <laughs> and that's what when you call it home, you want to do even more. Right. So we are doing it because yeah. we want to, you know, it's not because we want to do better and we want to create a better uh, future for our kids and for ourselves as well, for the society. So that's that's when, when this little bit of bitterness happens is because you want to move, drive the change. So you want to improve things. And, and most of us traveled the world and saw that it's possible. So it's that is not, uh, you know, exception. It's a rule that is possible that you can integrate more and, and include more people cool. yeah and thank you that you are also creating with your uh with your video podcast uh the platform for people to present their work and to present their biographies because maybe it helps other people to to realize their own uh, potentials and their own possibilities Thank you, Tarek. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure. And this just started as a hobby, you know, just as, as a side, let's see if there's a, one other story that people would like to share. And there are, so that's super important. And uh, so they are cross-connecting now with, with each other. And it's also about being kind of role models for other people as well. So we were, we, I'm looking now how we can do even more for, for the younger young professional and, and uh, young people so what we can do else for them that they can see okay you know there are business people successful business owners and and they had a you know rough start as well so that that's how it is you know you cannot choose these things some things they, they happen and it's just you know you need to get get through it you need to go further you know it's, it's standing um in one spot it doesn't work and show mama it's also not working always, especially for motivate, you know, ambitious people like yourself with a Shauma Mal, it's sometimes hard to digest. <laughs> yeah. Tarek, before Yeah, no, you're you're doing you're doing a really great job. That's that's really cool. And maybe that's an idea. Uh, you told me that you had uh, 61 people in your show, in your podcast. So maybe it's also uh, a good thing to connect these people, make an alumni uh, network or to connect these people and on a, maybe after Corona in a physical event, maybe that's also a chance to connect with other people from all over the world. You told 25 countries. Yeah. It, it seems to be that uh, you, you, are, you have the great talent to connect people. Please uh, continue your work. Thanks, Dark. 
we actually started, so we, we were happy that uh, Corona, you know, that it was a little bit relaxed. So we started with the monthly meetings. So next time when you're in Vienna, let us know. So we or we meet once a, once a month. Uh, it's not just for the people who I interviewed. It's also open for other people because there are many who are inspired by this story and they want to join. Also Austrians. So that's very important to say. So it's not exclude. Uh, you know, we are not excluding anyone. So our table is bigger and uh, bigger. So we are inviting everyone. So we have Austrians as well who want to be part of this um, this network and they want to learn so how does it that people who come from abroad and start from zero so in most of the cases don't understand the language as well and they still you know su uh, succeed and they still build the companies and they still you know uh, do a lot of crazy things and good things and how is that possible when someone is born here and knows the language and knows the system gets stuck in between so i think that's this link is also very very important uh, that we learn from one another that we see what yeah. you know with the shortcuts that I'm we completely find. with you <laughs> we find the shortcuts as i always if you want a shortcut oh. call the foreigner you know call the the, the next person and they they know Cool, Tarek. Thank you so much uh, for sticking with us. Um, before we wrap up, any book that you would like to uh, share with the viewers? Uh, what do you read? Any books, uh, book to read? Um, I'm reading a lot of contracts at the moment. <laughs> so uh, there's not so much time for reading. But if uh, when I'm reading books, I always read uh, some kind of romance about uh, uh, fantasy or criminal romans are uh, uh, reason at the moment I'm reading a book by uh, Sebastian Fitzek a criminal it's called the present so uh, I when I'm reading I try to uh, have an uh, how to say to have a place another place uh, to get new uh, new ideas, a new perspective, and uh, things not which are connected with my work and with my social work. So to get a little escape, maybe. Yeah. True, we all need that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, Tarek, thanks so much. Uh, enjoy the evening, we talk soon and let us know when you're in Vienna. So I would love to have you for a coffee. Thank you, Adela, for the invitation. So bye bye, have a nice Ciao. evening. You too, bye bye.